Hello sewing people of the internet. This video is going to be an unboxing and first impressions of this Singer HD 6360M sewing machine. This sewing machine is part of Singer's heavy duty series. I'm making air quotes with the heavy duty thing. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it as we get going. So this video is going to be the first in a series of videos where I'm going to do the most in-depth review of any sewing machine I've ever done. I really want to examine this machine closely and get to the bottom of its real capabilities and whether or not it's actually heavy duty in the sense that I interpret heavy duty to mean. Before we unbox the machine, for you to fully understand my perspective on what I find about this machine, you need to know a little bit about me. So in case you're new to the channel, I need to give you some background. I'll put chapter markers so you can skip ahead if you want to, but if you don't understand where I'm coming from, then you may not be getting the fullest picture of my interpretation of this machine. This machine might be perfect for you, and I might describe it as not being so perfect, and, and you might get the wrong impression. So you need to understand where I'm coming from. Especially you, Keith. So I've been sewing seriously for a little bit over 10 years now. Uh, I am a hobbyist. Uh, seamster, but I worked professionally for a few years in marine canvas and bag manufacturing, leather bag manufacturing, and I typically sew with heavier materials making complicated projects like backpacks. So I make backpacks out of number 10 wax canvas with motorcycle inner tube on the bottom, or using heavy synthetic fabrics like 1680 denier ballistic nylon, and you know, various padding and stuff and webbings and stuff. I, I like heavy use gear. I started my sewing career making lightweight camping projects like my uh, ultralight camping hammock and I've made a pretty bad tent and a few other lightweight camping related items but the bulk of my sewing is oriented around bags and packs and pouches and that kind of thing typically out of heavier fabrics. I primarily use walking foot sewing machines. I have a Conso 206 industrial walking foot machine that's my main daily driver and I have a couple of Sailrite ultra feeds that I use quite regularly as well. It has been a theme of my channel from the very beginning that I recommend that a sorry pretty cool Camaro. It's been a theme of my channel from the beginning that I recommend that someone new to sewing who wants to sew utilitarian or outdoor gear or anything you know towards the heavier side really even ultralight stuff to start with a vintage domestic or household sewing machine when i say a vintage machine i generally mean built prior to 1970 that's kind of a blurry line but around 1970 is when a lot of sewing machines started getting plastic gears inside and those gears have you know aged and can become brittle and, and tend to break so machines built prior to 1970 more often tend to have all metal gears. It's not always the case. A further philosophy of my channel is that if you do the kinds of things that I want to do, you're ultimately going to want a walking foot sewing machine. Most people, when they say they need an industrial or heavy duty machine, what they really mean is they need a walking foot machine, even if they don't know it. A walking foot machine makes feeding heavier, thicker assemblies far easier than what a non-walking foot or a drop feed household sewing machine will ever be able to do. Household sewing machines can be fitted with a walking foot attachment. I did a video about this some time ago. I'll put a card in the corner, but uh, I'll save you the trouble of watching it. It does not work the same way as a walking foot sewing machine. It does provide some advantage in some situations and it's, it could be a useful item but it's not the same as a walking foot sewing machine. So I say all that to say this. Singer markets this machine as heavy duty in that it's uh, capable of piercing thicker materials and sewing thicker materials. And when I was new to sewing, I bought into that marketing and I thought this was the machine I needed. I read some reviews at that time and decided that maybe this isn't the machine for me and I ended up buying a vintage machine and that led into me owning many, many vintage machines. But now I want to explore whether this machine really is heavy duty or if it's just a regular Singer sewing machine with a gray plastic frame and the words heavy duty in its name. This video is not sponsored by anyone and it'll probably become obvious pretty quickly that it's definitely not sponsored by Singer. 
Uh, I paid for this machine out of my own pocket. I paid, I think, $229 for it, uh, plus tax or whatever. Uh, I bought it directly from Singer's website, and they offered free shipping. So it's pretty good, actually, a pretty good deal, you know, $229 for a brand new machine. That's not too extravagant. They, brand new machines get way, way more expensive than that. But I paid for it myself. No one is influencing my opinion. It should be clear pretty quickly, I definitely have a bias, and that bias is against this machine uh, to a great extent. If, if I come away from this experience liking this machine, no one's going to be more surprised than me. I'm going to make a prediction right now. I predict that this machine is probably okay and probably will be fine for sewing reasonable things that one should expect it to sew. But what I expect is that the heavy duty nature of this machine is at least exaggerated, if not just a complete marketing falsehood and it's just a regular sewing machine with nothing heavy duty about it. But I am open to being wrong and I'm going to test the machine and see what it can do and we'll all learn together whether I find it to actually be heavy duty. So the machine that I purchased is the HD 6360M. Uh, I was very confused by Singer's naming conventions for these machines and upon looking into it, it seems like they have two basic machine platforms and then the variations on those platforms basically are just machines that come with different accessories so there's the 4423 the 440 4432 4452 uh etc etc and it seems like they're all the same two machines so one machine claims to have 97 stitch applications and the other machine or the other platform has 110 stitch applications i'm doing the scare quote thing here because stitch applications is defined by singer as something you can do with a particular stitch and it, so the machine has this one has 32 built-in stitches and the other machine the other platform has 23 built-in stitches i believe so i'm not real clear on what the whole stitch application thing is to be honest with you, for me, I need forward and reverse and zigzag, and that's about it. So I'm probably never going to use the buttonhole feature of this machine, but maybe you will, and maybe we'll test it out at some point. But that, that stuff isn't that important to me, but I am a little put off by the stitch application thing. Uh, it just kind of sounds a little bit hypey to me, but in any event... A couple of things I've noticed looking at Singer's website. On the heavy-duty machines, it says it has a heavy-duty metal frame. And then when I looked at several of the other models, they also have a metal frame that seems to be identical. It really looks to me, and I don't know for sure, but it really looks to me like all of their machines, virtually all of their machines, start on the same frame and some of them get gray plastic put on the outside that says heavy duty on it. I, maybe there's some differences between the frames that aren't immediately apparent but they certainly don't call that out in any way that's obvious to me. So the heavy duty machines are claimed to have higher power motors. The motors are listed as 0.6 amp motors and some of the other machines that I looked at have 0.5 amp motors. Whether or not that makes a real difference, I don't know. For comparison's sake, I recently did a review of a 1960s, late 1960s Kenmore, an excellent vintage sewing machine that has a 1.2 amp motor, so it's twice as powerful as this motor. My Singer 201 machines, some of the most highly regarded machines ever made, have a 0.6 amp motor. So that motor is the same power as this motor, and that's a very capable machine. It's not exactly uh, overly powerful, but initially uh, I'm not real impressed by a 0.6 amp motor, but there's more than just the power of the motor at play here, so perhaps 0.6 amps will work really well in this package. I don't know. The speed 
of this machine is listed as 1100 stitches per minute. I use an industrial sewing machine that can go 3000 or more stitches per minute. Uh, I think the motor I have on it is capable of like 5000 stitches per minute, but I don't think that my machine is rated for that. But so 1100 stitches per minute is pretty respectable, I think, for a domestic machine. I'm going to try to do some speed testing of some other machines and compare it, but uh, that's that's good. Speed isn't necessarily helpful sometimes, uh, just, you know, how fast do you want to screw something up? Uh, but they, they say that it's capable of 1100 stitches per minute. Uh, I've seen some places on their website where it says that this machine is 50% faster, but it never says then what? It's just 50% faster. So that's kind of a empty comparison if you don't tell me what it's 50% faster than. But anyway, so we'll see if it's a fast machine. There's a, an interesting panel on the side of the box showing some, a very brief history of the Singer sewing machines and uh, includes the featherweight and uh, I think it's a 404 or 401. I think it's 401. Uh, and then getting into some of the more modern machines. That's kind of interesting. On the back, there's just some very basic information about the machine. On the top, it shows what comes in this particular box. And again, it seems like their model numbers are just a way of uh, differentiating what accessories come with the machine. So with the 6360M, you get the machine, an extension table, several accessory feet, including a Teflon foot, uh, which I'm interested in, and a walking foot attachment, and a, a hump jumper. I forget what they call it, but it's essentially what it is. Uh, some bobbins and some other stuff. Um, so that's what we should find inside. some basic information on the box. It's funny, it says to change the needle after eight hours of sewing. God, I've never done that. Uh, some random stuff, some safety instructions. I'll take a look at that stuff. Extension table. This may be completely meaningless, but this is a very lightweight machine. We, we tend to equate heavy duty, powerful things with being heavy things. Maybe that's a, a false comparison, but, but it's very lightweight. The dust cover that I'll almost certainly never use. And then here's the accessories. And I'm not going to get all that stuff out right now. There's some instructions and advertisement for iron for 25% off or something. Uh, I don't know what this piece of paper is for, maybe nothing. All right. So uh, I will say that the machine seemed to be very well packaged. Everything's very neat. I don't see anything damaged. Uh, so that's that's fine. I, mean, I don't have any complaints about it. Um, so. I, I want to say, by the way, that you know I have pretty strong feelings about this because I really don't like for people to be misled. I've had conversations with people about this machine uh, where they've been uh, disappointed by its capabilities, uh, not meeting their expectations, and not realizing as a new seamster that the failures that they were experiencing were a failure of the machine and not a failure of them. And they just think, well, sewing is really, really hard and they want to give up sewing. Um, and I don't want that to happen to people. Like, if, if this is not the right machine for the job, then using it to do the job is, is not going to go well. But if you don't know that it's not the right machine for the job, then you won't know that that's what the problem is. So, 
I'm saying all that to say that this seems like a fine, inexpensive, entry-level sewing machine, as long as you know that's what it is. I'm real worried about the fact that it says heavy duty on it. All right, got the machine plugged in, and okay, that was easy enough. I'm, I probably should read the manual, but I'm not a real read the manual kind of guy. So I'm just gonna try to get this thing threaded. I guess that stays down. And I'm just gonna use some kind of typical polyester household thread for now. For most of my sewing, I use a thread stand with uh, V69 thread on an industrial style cone. Uh, I use V69 thread for the majority of my sewing and eventually I will run V69 in this machine to see how it goes but I just want to make sure that it actually works correctly before I do anything else. So I believe this goes on there and this goes that way. Yeah. I guess there's not a clutch. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if that automatically declutches. Usually with a, a vintage machine, there's a knob to turn to disconnect the sewing mechanism while you're winding a bobbin, but I'm guessing this probably does it automatically. Yeah. some reason that's pushing I may not have this on right it's uh, sliding off of the rod here but that's fine though actually did a great job of winding the bobbin so that's cool all right so let's see if we can figure out how to thread this crazy thing all right, so I'm just going to follow the diagrams on the machine. This is not a how to thread this machine video. Just want to see how easy it is to figure it out. These modern machines are typically pretty easy to thread. Go that way. Yeah. Had a pretty big needle in the machine. It comes with a pack of, quote, heavy duty needles. I don't know what size they are. Uh, but it was very easy to thread. That's pretty easy. So uh, let's find some appropriate. I guess we'll just go straight to 1000 denier Cordura. And we're at the longest stitch length, we're in straight stitch. So. Good slow speed control. And let's go to 
Now we do zigzag. I guess it's that. Yeah, okay, so that would be the standard, and then second stitch is this other, okay. All right, that's fine. Well, no, where's the stitch width then? Uh, needle, tension, oh, there, okay. stuff I haven't even looked at yet. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that's fine. The zigzag tension's a little off, but that's just something I need to adjust. But yeah, so it's terrific. That's really good, actually. I'm quite uh, not, not displeased with the initial just regular sewing performance. I don't know what this does. All right, so uh, initially uh, the machine works. Uh, works just like any sewing machine so far. Um, I do like the fine motor control. That, that feels pretty nice. You know, just having a modern uh, motor with better control. It's very easy to thread. I've never threaded this machine. Don't have them, haven't looked at the manual at all. So uh, overall, I don't have any complaints so far. Okay, this is at least partly my fault. I was fiddling around with the machine and I was trying to uh, take a look at the automatic needle threader, which is not something I use on any machines ever. Uh, even some of my vintage machines that have them, they're usually broken. But I accidentally engaged the button holder, I think, uh, the button hold uh, function control, uh, and now I can't get it to go back to its resting position or turn it off or however you want to say it. Well, uh, so the machine didn't come with a physical manual. Pretty common, I think, these days. It has this quick start guide, but it doesn't have a comprehensive manual. So I went on their website to download the manual, and it's directing me to an app. And I don't want an app. Like, and this is just me being a curmudgeonly old man but uh, so I'm gonna see if I can find the manual in there. They're, they have manuals. One good thing about Singer is they have manuals for all the old machines that they've ever made on their website. So if you buy an old Singer machine and you don't have the manual, you can uh, find one that way. But um, let's see, this is the 6360. Oh, but I still, uh, come on, find a manual. Okay, so the manual is on the website, you have to go to the find a manual section and search for it that way. So you don't have to use the app, that's good. Uh, I was gonna be pretty irritated if I have to download an app for this machine. All right, so let me figure out how to disengage the button holder. The manual was absolutely no help in getting this back up, but I finally got it to go back up. So using the button hole feature is not something that I'm familiar with or intend to use, but uh, anyway, I got it back, so that's fine. A little disappointed that the manual wasn't more helpful, but let's try some 16ADD. I'm just doing some very brief tests with different fabrics just to kind of get a feel for the machine. There's a big difference between sewing a sample piece of fabric and sewing a bag, for example. So I just want to see kind of how it does as an initial impression. So this is two layers of 1680D ballistic nylon, probably the toughest fabric that I have. We'll go back to longest stitch length. We're still in straight stitch. Leave the tension where it is. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, it didn't feed at all. That's interesting. Uh, what's going on? Okay. Well, I found the cutter. It's on the side of the machine. Right, I'm not sure what happened there. That might be something I did messing around with the buttonhole, so let's give it another try. Okay, stitch length is at four. All right, why are we not feeding? Do something to make it not feed. Let me try some more 1000D. So it sewed that 1000D just fine, so we'll try that again and see. Okay, so that's fine. I don't know what happened there. I'm going to assume that I did something when I was messing with the button holder uh, or something. So I'm going to give the machine the benefit of the doubt on that one. Because uh, for some reason it just wasn't feeding. But uh, let's go to a zigzag. Really short stitch length. So that's fine. To straight stitch, and I'll double it up so that's four layers of 1680. That looks more that's fine. So I have some thin upholstery vinyl. Um, I don't have the Teflon foot on here. That would probably be better if I was actually going to do something with this and probably wouldn't use this thread for this either, but just for laughs to see how it goes, we'll try a little piece of this. And as I expected, it's fine. It's actually a really nice wide zigzag stitch. Okay, so my initial impressions are it sews fine. Uh, actually, I might even say better than expected, but I mean, I really haven't done anything to really test its capabilities, but it works as well as I would expect any new 
machine of this uh, you know price point to work. Uh, a YouTube channel did a really good breakdown of the construction and internal components of this machine. So I'm not going to try to duplicate that. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to check that out. Watching that video definitely gives me concerns about the long-term reliability of a machine like this. But what does long-term really mean? Like if a machine like this lasts five years and you have to buy another one, and it's really not that bad, I guess, for, for that price. So I guess we'll see how, how it progresses with my use. But so uh, I guess my initial thoughts based on a couple of minutes of sewing, it sews fine. It remains to be seen uh, whether or not I can use this to sew a real project. But I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to be as good as any other machine. I'm still highly skeptical of the the heavy duty naming of this machine and I fear that it could mislead people to think this machine is capable of something more than it really is. Nothing I've sewn on it today is beyond the capabilities of any of my vintage sewing machines and all of them cost far less than this one. Many of them free or you know twenty, twenty five dollars, fifty dollars. So I would say if you are considering this machine uh, a, don't purchase anything based on just this video, but just know that so far, my wife's brother sewing machine, I don't remember the model, I'll put text in the video to indicate, but it's its not their tough and strong model, which is probably similarly misnamed, but uh, it's just a standard household sewing machine. I could do anything that I've done today on her machine just as well. They feel very similar, so um, I would just say, Right now, my opinion is if you need a brand new machine and you like this one because it's gray, then that's probably a good reason to buy it. But Singer does have several other models that are less expensive that don't look like this, but I'm pretty sure are the same machine. Uh, maybe with just a slightly less powerful motor and maybe, I mean, slightly to the point you probably wouldn't notice. But anyway, I so far I would say... Uh, I don't even know. I don't want to say I'm impressed. I mean, it feels nice to sew with, actually. So I may enjoy using it when I use it more. But uh, it didn't break immediately <laughs> upon me trying to sew with it. If it had, that would be pretty shockingly bad. I want to encourage you to, uh, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification because I'm going to be doing multiple videos comparing this machine to some of my vintage sewing machines. I'm going to be sewing actual projects on this machine, including up to a backpack. Uh, and I really want to test whether or not this is the right machine for someone who wants to make your own gear for you know, outdoor use or making bags and packs and things like that. Or if this is a good machine to have in your arsenal of many machines. Or if this is a machine to be avoided. My initial thoughts... This could potentially be a good machine to have in your arsenal. I don't know if it's more than that, but I could see it being useful for the right applications. We just have to figure out what those applications are. Anyway, I hope you find this uh, useful or informative. If you do and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Clicking like is always a nice thing to do. Uh, as I said, I bought this machine with my own money and this video is not sponsored in any way. You subscribing and clicking like and watching the video is helpful. If you find it really helpful and you want to buy me a Coke, there's a button that says thanks underneath the video and you can click on that and throw me a couple of bucks. You can also buy merchandise from my Spring store and there's some affiliate links below. If you purchase from those links, I get a little kickback and I can buy my second Lamborghini. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.